So welcome back to another video and today I am back with the Halloween reviews and today I will be reviewing Rob Zombie's Halloween. Now this one is starting to get a following so maybe my opinions on this film will not be as controversial because I really enjoy this one especially towards the end. It's really good towards the end. Does it have its pros? Yes. Does it have its cons? Most definitely not every movie is perfect and yeah so Halloween Rob Zombie. Let's get right into this review. So, you start off the movie with a dysfunctional family, which doesn't fit the Halloween franchise. Me, myself, I've always said this, and I'm even doing it in my Halloween script. You can show Michael's family. You know, you can show his family. You don't have to go full dysfunctional. You can just have a normal suburban family. You don't have to go full extreme on it. That's what Rob did in the opening, and it, it's, you really can't watch that opening. Like, it's really hard to watch. It's just, I don't know, not for me. But once we get past that opening, and once we get, you know, Michael, you know, killing his sister and all that, which is a really good scene, it's, it's ours to become really good. I really enjoy this movie. The cinematography is beautiful. Cinematography is beautiful. The way it's shot is beautiful. Tyler Maine does an awesome job as Michael. Very brutal and aggressive Michael. Love the mask. One of my favorite masks out of the whole franchise. Has to be top three. Easy for me. Top three. That's actually two masks in this, by the way. There's the clean white one that he wears as a kid. And then there's obviously the aged one, which looks really cool, by the way. So I love those two masks. And I also love the alternative masks that he uses when he's in Smith Groves, like the pumpkin masks. Like, I think that's really creative. Like, no one talks about that. But, you know, the, Rob actually took the time to think of something, you know, you know, really creative for Michael, and that is Michael making masks. I think that's really cool and just creative to me. That Michael, you know, has a room in Smith Grove where he makes masks. I think that's really cool. You know, you know, you know it's that small thing, you know, that really just makes everything, you know, even awesomer about it. A character and that's just you know you know cool that like likes the paper mache masks i don't know i just find that cool some they may not like it but to me i i like that you know it just adds a characteristic to michael without making him talk it just adds a characteristic to him that actually i like like the kills and this the kills are very good and brutal i love the kills scott scott taylor compton I probably, I probably butcher her name every time I say it. Love her portrayal as Lori. I really love her portrayal as Lori. And she becomes a fighter towards the end of the movie. She does not take nothing from Michael. And she would not give up. Daniel Harris is in this. I love her character that she plays in this. Again, we're we'll talking for a minute about Daniel Harris. I wish people would give her the credit that she deserves for you know Halloween 4 and 5 and from these two Rob Zombie movies she does not get the credit she deserves she loves the Halloween fans she loves this franchise we need you know, P, you know people need to start giving you know Daniel Harris some moral credit I've been saying that forever you know she loves this franchise she loves this, she's a fan of this franchise as much as we are I had to get I, I just had to say that real quick but yeah I love the score. I love the score in this. You know, it's similar to the original, but it has this, like little cues here and there where it's just something different. Um, Malcolm McDowell's Doctor Loomis. Love his Doctor Loomis. Say what you want about his Doctor Loomis. I love his Doctor Loomis in this one. In the second one, I don't know what happened. I feel like just Rob rewrote him for some odd reason. But I love Doctor Loomis in this one. Malcolm McDowell does an awesome job as Doctor Loomis, and. Yeah, there's so many good things about this movie that I can actually say. But some of the cons would have to be, like I talked about earlier, is the whole opening with the dysfunctional family. Is that needed? No. Um, you know, the whole scene, you know, if you really think about it, it makes no sense. The scene where, like, Michael takes Lori to the Myers house and puts her in the basement. He takes off the mask. He throws down the knife. He has the picture dangling, you know, you know, you know dangling you know right in her face to me that makes no sense because michael is set up early on to have no remorse he's going to kill you if you're blood he's going to kill you if you stand right in front of him that's what this michael is set up to be very on because if you pay attention to the movie you would know that there's this guard this guard 
you know, basically, you know, basically takes up for Michael. You know, it'll, you know, it, you know, when Michael is in Smith's Grove, there's this guard. He takes care of Michael. He looks after him. He protects him. Whatever. He's basically his friend. You know, and Michael kills him. Like Michael, like brutally kills him. Basically, you know, basically setting up this Michael, no remorse. Then we go to later on in the film, Michael has Laurie in his basement. Okay. You know, you can kind of try to fix that and say, oh, they're blood. I don't think it matters with Michael, <laughs> like, especially like this portrayal of Michael. I don't think it matters. Like, he's angry. And it's, I, I love that one scene where he goes into the house and he kills Lori's stepmom. Love that scene because it's like, like Michael is basically like telling her, like not like speaking it, but like telling her, I'm going to get your daughter. Like like showing her the picture and just killing her slowly. That's thing that no one really talks about in, you know, about this movie. Michael is verbal in this movie. Not like he talks, but he's verbal. Like in his mannerisms, the way he walks, the way he, you know, he approaches somebody. He comes off as verbal. Not, you know, not talkative, but he comes off verbal. And I like that. That's something, you know, that's unique. That's, you know, I don't think we're ever going to see again. Um, yeah. I just feel like he's verbal. Like, I've never really noticed that until this watch. And as I think about it, he's verbal. But he don't speak. But he's verbal. Like, the way he tells his head and the way, you know, again, like, the way he killed... Lori's stepmom is like he's talking to her but he's not like showing her the picture and just killing her slowly it's like the it's his way of talking is basically killing and stalking that's that, to me that's to me that's deep that is deep I don't I don't know I don't know if that was Rom's attention but if he put all that together that is deep like that is deep in my opinion and so like I, I do like the approach, you know, I don't like the whole humanizing Michael towards the end, you know, when he's showing Lori the picture, which makes no sense to me. But I do like that Rob kind of took a realistic approach to it, kind of what John Carpenter did, but more of a realistic approach where like Michael, you know, you know, you know killed animals and all this at a young age. If you know... Jeffrey Dahmer and like his real story it kind of you know it's kind of like Jeffrey Dahmer's real story almost um, if you've seen the movie My Friend Dahmer you could kind of you know see you know the comparisons of the real life story of Jeffrey Dahmer and you know so I, I kind of see you know where Rob was going with this he you know he was trying to do like a rule you know basically you know basically what John Carpenter was doing but really taking it into you know the modern day and basically base michael off a of real life serial killer but not really but doing it loosely you know basically making michael more in our world it's it's like really hard to explain though know, because john carpenter did it really good as well but i feel like rob just did something different with you know by making michael in our world because of you know the whole jeffrey Dahmer, you know cup whole Jeffrey Dahmer comparison and they say like if you're you know you know have signs of a serial killer like that's the first thing you do is sadly harm animals you know what I mean like that you kind of you know put two and two together and you kind of see what Ron was going for was a very very realistic approach which I don't mind it's just I don't really like the dysfunctional family at the beginning I just kind of find that hard to watch now and I just not a fan and I hate the rape scene and it's like why is that needed like why is that needed in this movie to be honest I really just fast forward that rape scene like this is not needed like who asked for it <laughs> like who really asked for that Brian Dorf is in this the voice of Chucky that was really awesome some very good acting in this I I you know I will admit I love this movie I I kind of treat this movie how I treat Halloween 6 I can look over you know the things that I don't like and enjoy it. I said it. I enjoy Rob Zombie's Halloween. You know, this watch. I don't know if it was the popcorn I was eating or what, but I enjoy this movie a lot more. I don't know what it is. I just, 
I don't know. Like, it's just something about it this time. It's just like, wow. Like, you know, I, 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 I think, like, seeing things that, you know, that's the, you know, that's the thing about horror movies that you just love. Like, there's, there's things that you never notice about, you know, the killer or the story, you know, that you're like, oh, that makes me like it even more. And I, and I think, you know, that small thing, you know, making Michael verbal without making him speak. That makes me like it even more. I mean, the whole cinematography, the shots, the whole shot where Michael's on that balcony. And this Michael, you don't want to come across as Michael, especially when he's angry. You don't want to come across as dude. Because the, like this Michael has a little pep in his step. He don't slowly walk. He has a little pep in his step. Especially like towards the end of the movie where he lunges at Lori and just tosses over. That is, uh, there's some really cool scenes in this. This is a really good Halloween movie. I wouldn't say it's a perfect Halloween movie. I will surprise people, you know, with my rating. Yes, I don't like the dysfunctional family. Yes, I don't like the unnecessary rape scene. Yeah. Um, yes, we could have did the, you know, yes, we could have did away with the weird, you know, humanizing Michael, take, you know, taking Lori to the Myers basement, which made no sense to me. But hey, it's what it is. We could have did away with all that unnecessary stuff. But if you overlook that, this is actually a pretty... What a pretty well made Halloween movie, you know, and you know, I'll, I know obviously this isn't this is not a shot for shot, but you can see that Rob Zombie was fighting that in some scenes. Like Dimension wanted one thing, but you know, Rob wanted one thing, you know, you know, a lot of people don't know this, like, a lot of people hate on Rob Zombie, you know, for making this, but a lot of people don't realize Rob Zombie. He, you know, didn't even want to come back for the sequel. He wanted to leave because of his experience, because of how they like just treated him when, you know, on um, you know, just there's like, you know, can't talk. Just like how Dimension treated him, you know, just like how Dimension treated him on set. He didn't want to come back for the sequel. He had no intentions. And to be quite honest with you, he's, he's not really a sequel guy. You know, you look at his movies, you know, The Devil's Rejects. Yes, it's a sequel, but is it? directly connected not you know yes y yes you know yes the devil's rejects is a sequel but is it like a direct sequel no like the titles changed and everything like he is not really a sequel guy unless he spins it on his head in some type of way like the devil's rejects like three from hell you see what i'm saying so yeah rob zombies halloween i like this one a, a lot more than i did because you know before I I liked it, but I acknowledge the problems more. This time, I think I'm gonna start treating this movie like Halloween Six, where I just put the things I don't like aside and just really and sit down and enjoy this movie for what it is, because I enjoy. It. You know, I'm, I'm not afraid to say it. I'm not. I enjoy it. Rob Zombie's Halloween. Is it my favorite Halloween movie? No, like it's not. But could it be top top six, top five? Got to stay tuned for that ranking. We got two more to go. You know, uh, my final thoughts on Rob Zombie's Halloween. Pretty good Halloween movie. As I really sit down and think about it and just just watched it more. And, yeah, like, again, like, no one's talked about that or really noticed that. Michael's verbal. And it's like, I keep talking. Like, I've never noticed that. Michael's verbal, but without speaking. That is creative to me. Like, no one's thought about that until Rob Zombie came around. Like making Michael verbal, but without making him speak. So, if you get what I'm saying, comment below. But yeah, if I have to rate this movie, I say a nine and a half, almost a full nine. If they did away with the dysfunctional family again, like I said, you can show Michael's family. I'm even writing a script where I where I will show Michael's family, but it's but it's a normal suburban family. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, and stay tuned for the Rob Zombies Halloween two. After I do Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, obviously I will do a Halloween 2018 review, but before I even do that, I want to talk about some facts that a lot of people don't know about these two Rob Zombie films, and those may actually surprise you. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash the like button, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, let's have a full discussion in the comments below. How do you feel about Rob Zombie's Halloween? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's trash? I'm very curious, because this... You know, 
you know, in my opinion, this is the most split movie out of the whole franchise. This is the most split movie out of the whole franchise. You could say part, you know, part two, Rob Zombies, but this one is really split down the middle. This is really split down the middle. Let me know how you feel about it in the comments below. Catch you guys in the next video.